after that. So, all right. So, thank you all for joining us today. Um, this is uh, the Arts Drive, another roundtable. Uh, the first one we had was in person. This one we're doing via Zoom. So, hopefully, it'll go a little better this time. More more eyes on it, at least, because the other one was not too well attended. So. Um, the three of you are all in the Art Thrive show this year. Uh, Chanel Doinoff, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, but- Oh no, that's um, perfect. <laughs> Hi, Chanel. Hi. Jewelry <laughs> artist. Um, we also have Elena Romero, who is a photography artist, and Francois Barnes, who is an abstract artist. Hi, so, Elena. <laughs> Hi, Francois. Nice, nice E meeting you, E. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Nice to meet you too. Nice to meet you both. Yes, everyone. Thank you all for being here today. So we'll just go ahead and get started. And, um, you know, you can take these questions, um, you know, one at a time if you want to raise your hand or if you just want to jump into it, however you want to do it. Um, but I just want to ask uh, some questions and it's, you know, pretty low key stuff. So just real easy questions. Um, so I just wanted to ask each of you how you got your start as an artist. Okay. So, yeah. So. Okay, I'll start. <laughs> okay, uh, that was way back in the 70s, and I'm an old lady. <laughs> and um, I was then somewhat attracted by the textile arts, and I became, I was in Ohio, so not very far from Amish County. And uh, I started, I met somebody who was already making quilts, and I discovered what a quilt was. And I thought, wow, as a French person, I had no idea, you know, what, what quilts were. So, but uh, we talked a lot and, and I could see that I could completely explode that and, and not follow at all the uh, traditional patterns and do exactly what I wanted, whatever was in my, uh, so that's how I started really, because at the time there was a push for uh, quilts to not to go on the bed, but to go on the walls as art. And there had been an exhibition in, in New York. And so that's what I did. And uh, I went sort of far there and I co-founded a very prestigious um, quilt, art quilt uh, exhibition, which is going very strongly still. But in uh, the early nineties, <sighs> <laughs> I became bored <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> and and yeah and you know time went on I was already you know uh, not too young and I thought what do you want to do now you know I felt that I had done everything and said everything so I started painting now all along I had taken some classes in painting in represent representational painting so that's how I started in the painting um, area Okay. <laughs> um, I so, the, so I guess I'll go next. Um, so yeah, I started doing jewelry about maybe um, like eight years ago, I would say. And it all started when I took a class down at New Mexico State University. And it was an elective class when I was going to school there. And ever since that, that I kind of like went on a different path. And I would say, you know, I, I always kind of felt like I was creative in different ways, but when I started doing jewelry, that's when I felt like I found my medium and my, uh -huh. <laughs> my, you know, yeah, like, just like, yeah. how it's easier for me to work with. I'm not so much of like a 2D artist. Um, I was able to really mold things with my hand and bring things to, to fruition that way, so. Oh, I understand, yeah. Mm -hmm. When you find your, when you find really your vein, you know, I mean, everything comes together somehow. Yes, exactly. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess uh, when any, anybody ever asked me when I became a photographer, I guess uh, my favorite story is being like four years old and um, my grandmother used to take care of me. And she left me alone for a moment and I found her Polaroid camera <laughs> and, and it was loaded. And I just took a ton of pictures of just, just her kitchen, you know, <laughs> and it was just the same picture over and over. 
used up all the film. I didn't know how expensive it was, <laughs> but um, it's kind of sweet because now uh, I was visiting her recently and I, I found those big pictures in one of her drawers. So she oh, kept wow. them. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's been a lifelong fascination for me to, you know, pursue, I guess, just capturing what I see because I, 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 I really do it in a way where I want to share it with other people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> Uh, so, really yeah. good kind of kind of lead into uh, my next question is um if you could just tell us a little bit about uh, your your pro process of creation um, when you when you're making an, an object or an image what's kind of like your process behind that I'm not starting this time <laughs> How about you, Chanel? <laughs> okay um yeah I'll go I'll go first this time um you know so for with me it all starts like with a night you know, what do I want to say? How do I want to say it? And um, I do a lot of research and um, there's a lot of trial and error with what I do and um, a lot of experimentation and material studies. Um, Cause it's not, I don't, yeah, I do a lot of metalworking, but there's like different um, processes that I like to experiment with that. And a lot of my time I do um, like, model making. So since I work with metal, like precious metals and gems like that, they're a little bit more like kind of expensive materials. So there's no room for, for mess ups. Like if I mess Why? something up, yeah, I can't just, you know, I can't just keep messing up on something and it's kind of harder to do um, work with that. So I really have to make like a paper model. And then that way I could see how it lays on the body, what the size is going to be like, if it's too thick, is it going to wear well? If it's too thin, is it going to bend easily? Um, things like that. So there's a lot of um, pro there's a lot of um, model making in my my jewelry, I would say. And then I make the final piece. And with me, with my jewelry, what I like to do is I like to do like use traditional metal smithing techniques with also like new technology, and to come up with something new and kind of pushing the boundaries and kind of always going forward. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, first, I want to say that uh, when I start working, I have absolutely no goals except uh, that I want to lay it out, meaning what I have inside of me, you know, on the canvas. So the, the first thing that guides me, there is something, and that's color. And if I have been working on uh, a series with uh, fairly dark colors, then I know, okay, I'm done. I don't have anything else there. So I'm going to go with very pale colors. So it's color that guides my first steps. And uh, what is very, very important to me is what inspires me. And what inspires me is, I always say that uh, with emotion, it's nature. Mm -hmm. And ever since I was a little girl, yeah, I'm 79 now, by the way, <laughs> I shouldn't say it, but <laughs> you know, when I was a little girl, very little, little, I was in the garden uh, lifting stones to find insects, to, to look at their wings, to, mm -hmm. so, and it stayed with me and, uh, so what moves me is not really a gorgeous landscape necessarily, but it's the minute details of nature where uh, it's a little bit to me like jewelry, really, in a way, Chanel, when I look at the pieces that you have in the exhibition there, uh, to me, I, I really, um, I react to that because to me, I can look quick uh, uh, from close, you know, closely. It's yeah. a little bit like looking at uh, the leaf of a begonia or, you know, the, the strange uh, spots on, the, on an inst insect wings. I really relate to that. But anyway, so, and, and then I just throw some uh, color on the, as I said, maybe I will go towards, you know, some ochres and, and whites and creams and pale blues. And I do that and then something happens Again, I'm, I'm not, I don't have a, an image, nothing at all. But, you know, just by putting the first uh, brush strokes, 
suddenly there is something that, <laughs> that goes on in my head and, and, and it calls for me to, oh, I think I want to collage because I'm a mixed media uh, artist. I want to collage a little bit of this and then I will grab a piece of paper and I collage it with some, um, with some medium, some glue. And immediately, up, oh, that's another step. And I like to, to say that it's a little bit of a dance between the, the, the piece of work, the canvas, and, and, and me. And so I make a move, it makes a move, <laughs> you know, and we go back and forth like that and sometimes punches, <laughs> you know, <laughs> really, because the painting is telling me, no, <laughs> what you just did, you know. So, and I scratch, I remove, I glue again, I cover, and little by little, there is something that's happening which uh, becomes uh, more and more obvious. And, and then I have a sense of direction. So I don't know if that gives anybody a, an idea of how, you know, how I start. Right, it's like kind of, you don't have like a set goal. Like, I, like you just kind of go with the flow and you let the yeah. work kind of create itself. Right, like having like that, yeah, with right. you both doing that together. And right. um, I think with just like you with the mixed media, you choose the materials that mean something and that you want yes. to, like that say something and that calls to you. And um, you know, like you said, it, it does become like that dance. And then at the at the end of it, then it becomes like this this own I, I like this own entity on itself that it yes. was like kind right. of evolved into. Yes. Yeah. So it totally makes sense. Yeah, you you get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, Alana. <laughs> I can turn. completely relate with you on that as well. Um, uh, you know, it, it, it's interesting because uh, with photography, the first thing, you know, it, the art is already there. You're just taking pictures of things that already exist. So, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of like looking at the light, looking at, you know, just different things that you think will have a nice effect. But going into the computer, into the graphic aspect of it, that's where, you know, I'll have like an idea in mind when I shoot of what I want the image to look like. But when it's in there and I'm fiddling with settings and all of that, um, I end up many times with things that I didn't expect. Uh -huh. You know, um, something will pop up where it's like the image suddenly decided it wanted to be something completely different from what I, I had see. in mind. Yes, you too. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> okay. Very interesting. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what I think. Um, and also with photography, what I really admire is, um, like you said, like the art's already there, but you're capturing it. So it's mm -hmm. taking this sense of like this 4D, like that you're, and you're capturing that time and space and then making it like a 2D object, which I think is like really fascinating, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm uh, waiting for a, a camera that collects, you know, filling and sound as well as, <laughs> you know, oh, wow. as video. <laughs> uh, that's never going to happen, but I'm like, it would be nice if you could just put a suit on somebody and you know, have them feel the wind and listen to the birds as everything is happening. But right. no, you have to make do with, <laughs> you know, g giving a, an impression of a moment. So right. Al Alana, do you, so you bring the picture on the computer and then there you alter and you, is that, did I understand that right? Yeah. Um, so back in the day I did film and was very reluctant to go digital for years and but like um chanel had said earlier film is expensive and you can make any mm. mistakes with film um and so digital ended up being a good uh, uh option for me because you can just take you know as many photographs as you want um but you know one aspect that was lost um in switch the transition from film to uh digital is the light, uh, the dark room, oh, yes. um, where a lot of work, you know, a lot of creating an image uh, actually happened in the dark room. So now, yeah. you know, okay. now th those digital programs that have taken over that that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Okay. 
yeah. So now I use Lightroom <laughs> and Photoshop. So yeah, yeah. I have also. Mm -hmm. So my next question is: um, subject matter or titles or both really can tell us a lot about um, a work of art, an object. Um, could you give us any insight into maybe why you title some things the way you title or just some of the uh, insight and in behind the imagery that you, you use? Okay, we'll start. Alana, <laughs> you've now oh, yeah. started. Okay, yeah, I guess you, got, you guys started before, so that's fair. <laughs> um, actually, the title is the worst part for me. I, I oh. hate the titling part. And, a few of my images like have had multiple titles like through <laughs> as time progressed and I decided, you know, I changed my mind. I was like, no, I like this better, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's uh, sometimes it's easy to say, you know, put a title that goes corresponds with whatever it was that I was trying to mm -hmm. uh, express in the image and sometimes the image is just beautiful and I wanted to share it. And then it's like, you know, how do you title that? It's like, is it how you make it, how it makes you feel or how you want other people to feel when you see it? Or do you just say, you know, image number one? <laughs> 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 um, so yeah, I guess that, that part is always a, a struggle for me. Okay. No, yeah, I totally understand. Um, naming putting a name on a piece is hard for me too it, and it for me it doesn't come till afterwards it's not like I have the the name already thought out and then I create the piece for me it's like it, I create it and then I'm looking at it and I'm like well what that's the first thing that someone's going to see too and how mm -hmm. does that course like how does that relate to the piece mm -hmm. and I want it to be like a part of it and I want it to show like Part, you know, I want it to represent what it is. Like for right now, both of my pieces, they're in Japanese. Um, and that reflects yeah, part I saw, of who I, I am. Saw those yes. titles, yeah. Right. So that reflects part of who I am and part of what the piece is because um like with my piece, there's those QR codes on them, and those are like bringing you to a calligraphy um image of with the brush strokes, which in Japanese culture, those brush strokes are very like you just don't write it a certain, you just don't write it whatever way. There's a set way to write kanji and it's like meditative and things like that. So that's where the title kind of goes into that, you know, my piece for my, my specific piece this year. Um, you know, and then for the imagery itself, like, so this, this year with my pieces, it's very, um, I wanted to show kind of where we kind of are right now. Like maybe like someone in the future will find my my bracelets and be able to be like, oh, this was like during this time when QR codes were kind of popping up or when technology was kind of going going somewhere um, of where it is. And um, so I wanted to use use those um, aspects in that with the QR codes. And um, also with every so with my pieces too. Um, you know, everyone's kind of like on their phone a lot nowadays and, <laughs> you know, and so using that same phone, um, you know, for me, like sometimes you'll just be scrolling and then time goes by and you're kind of like detached of what's kind of really going on around you. And there's mm -hmm. like not much mindfulness going on. And, mm -hmm. um, I wanted to bring, use that same tool. You could use that same phone and click the same button and it'll take you somewhere of positivity to kind of slow things down to kind of get you with a clear mindset and give you that confidence, like just make you feel better, you know? So that's what I wanted to do. Um, especially with like, with my pieces that I make, like with jewelry, um, what I like about making jewelry and how to me as an art form. Um, cause most people, when they think jewelry, that is like, you go to the jewelry store and you just buy jewelry oh. because it's pretty, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah <laughs> but no, no, I don't see it that way. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, um, it becomes part when you put it on, you feel something like it becomes mm -hmm. like an extension of you. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, it comes to life when the wearer puts it on too. And then also when you go out into public, it might even have like an effect on 
like the people around you that can see it too. So that's, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. New friends, was. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so I'm I'm going to be kind of the exception there, and I love titles. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I love working uh, on titles, and it's not always easy. That's true. But life is a battle, right? <laughs> so, uh, so as the painting, you know, has developed, as I as I was saying, you know, uh, some things uh, sort of became a bit apparent. You know, they, they, they wanted to be there or I dug them out by force. But um, and so sometimes it's it's pretty obvious, you know, uh, lately <laughs> and, and the pieces in the in the show right there uh, talk about that a little bit. Uh, I was thinking, oh, my goodness, this, I'm into uh, the cosmos there. <laughs> I'm, I'm into planets and stars. And so I said, OK, let's go with that. <laughs> You know, so I mean, I have to admit that I will go online and look at names of, of you know, planets and of stars and, and then I pick what, you know, says something to me. And um, I had a problem with the player this because, well, I won't get into that. But so, so I do like titles and uh, very often they have not much to do with the actual you know, with the actual images that are included in the painting, but they have to do with how I felt when I was doing that. And uh, there, I had a whole series, they are not there anymore, so, but where I felt, I was thinking of me being French and my childhood and, and the songs that we used to hear that now probably hardly anybody knows <laughs> because I'm talking about long time ago and and that that came and i looked at those paintings i think there were three three or four no three and and oh yeah this one is going to be la vie en rose you know which is a very very famous uh song from edith piaf but i'm going back there to the 40s you understand <laughs> I mean, and, uh, you know, and then I drew my titles from, from that because I was in that French phase and feeling a little um, homesick, maybe. And uh, so, again, I love titles and I play with them. And if I find something a little quirky, the more the better. <laughs> Right, it's kind of like the icing on top, you know, it's just, yes. I think that, yeah, like the, the title does, is part of the artwork itself too, it's not just like the art and it's not just the title, it's like both of them together really makes the piece as a whole. Exactly, you mm -hmm. said it very well, to me, <laughs> it feels that way, you right. know. Right. So, mm -hmm. so no, Alana, not uh, artwork number one, artwork <laughs> number two. <laughs> No, uh, no, I never do that. But sometimes okay, I, I didn't want think to. you. I didn't think <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it feels like that way, right? Because it's like it's hard to. Because it's just sometimes it yeah, does. Yeah, like the, your main mind goes blank. But yeah. um, absolutely, mm -hmm. that's true. So, but anyway, uh, <laughs> we are creative, so we're supposed to come up with something, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> Although in some images, I'm like, I always dread. I'm like, please don't ask me why I titled it this way, because I don't know. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Oh. Well, that's interesting. You don't know, but uh, 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 there is a reason somewhere. Right. <laughs> you know. Right. I'm like, that's a great word. I love that word. <laughs> you know, I don't know. <laughs> I know. It's like, as already, my... yeah. go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say one of my pieces from the last show, Ghost Grains, actually went through like four different uh, titles. And I went from, I just was going through the thesaurus. I was trying to like yeah. find a word that perfectly exuded, yeah. you know, the, the feeling that I had from it. And uh, yeah, and I don't know what iridescence was a word at one point and like <laughs> ephemeral and all kinds of stuff. And I finally was just like, it's ghost cranes <laughs> and it's so much easier <laughs> and it's right. perfect for that image. So yeah, I, I'm going to go with my creative aspect and 
just say I'm an artist and I can change it if I want to. Yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah. You're the maker. Or you're the doer. Right. right. You know, your your hand print or your heart print is on on what you are doing, so it's yours. Yeah. You know. Did we answer? You think, Eric? <laughs> you think we answered? Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I think you all answered that one really well. So that was a great insight onto those titles. So oh, sure. just remember, Elena, don't don't title them Image One, Image Two. <laughs> I won't. I, I she doesn't. Promise. She doesn't. <laughs> uh, all right, right. So um, my next question is. Um, you're all um, currently New Mexico residents. I know, Francoise, you were not obviously from New Mexico originally, um, but being here in New Mexico now, um, you know, the artist community is, it, to me, it seems very strong. Um, yeah. And because of that, just, um, just tell me what being an artist here in New Mexico means to you as an artist. Okay, I can stop that easily. I was living in, uh, well, I lived in Ohio for a while and then in Colorado and Colorado is not too, too far. So my husband and I would come down and uh, visit New Mexico. And the first time that I actually uh, came to New Mexico, I thought people actually live in this absolute, <laughs> I won't use the word enchanted, okay? <laughs> but in this <laughs> magic, this absolutely gorgeous place. Yes, they do. And I remember being in Santa Fe and seeing uh, the streets that they, they reminded me of uh, French little towns, you know, of the, of the Riviera or, and I thought, I'm never gonna live here. But, <laughs> so we moved to New Mexico. <laughs> and so, and, and so for me, uh, and then, and then, of course, I was exposed to the art. You know, we went to Santa Fe regularly, regularly, and you just cannot be in New Mexico and not feel, you know, the 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 impact, the the beauty, not just about the landscape, but but about the art that is being made, has been made for almost ever, right? If we go back, so uh, it's very very important to uh, to me, that I am here in New Mexico and th that uh, the beauty of the place inspires me, you know, no end. Um, I don't know if I'm answering the question right now <laughs> or if I'm going in a, you know, in another place. I don't know. Uh, oops, Alana has disappeared. Yeah. At least oh. uh, she, she's not there on my, uh, on my screen. Yeah. She disappeared on mine as well. Um, we'll see if she pops back in. Um, she might just be having yeah. some connection problems. Yeah, yeah, there was a problem. Uh, so um, it, it, again, I'm going to say, if I had a choice, I'd be here. <laughs> and I'm, <laughs> so I'm here to say, it is just stupendously beautiful. And the art is moving, it's rich, it's growing, it's, it's everywhere. So, you know, very happy. New Mexico is it for me. Oh yeah, I like that. I um, I think New Mexico too, it's just so different from the rest of the world, not only from this country, but totally different from the rest of the world. And um, a lot of my inspiration comes from like looking within and going within myself and listening to my intuition and my inner voice and things like that. So being here in like this kind of stillness solitude kind of kind of slowed down pace is really nice um because it helps me w get away from all that like static and distractions and stuff like that um because growing up I I you know used to go to one of the most biggest cities in the world like in Tokyo so um, oh, yeah. going from yeah so going from that and like as like my childhood but then having this part of like kind of New Mexico helping me be the artist that that maybe I was, you know, I didn't know have within me because if I was in those kind of bigger places, I would probably wouldn't be able to focus on my like kind of see that me. more quiet mm -hmm. down kind of slow down pace of life here. Yeah. And I mean the, yeah, like like you said, Francoise, there's there's so much art here and you could feel it when oh. you're here. It's 
Ugh. It's like the energy, you know, Ugh. and the blue sky and you could just feel it. And um, so I think it really does play a tool um, or play a part in artists' lives here. It's almost like you cannot not make art. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. Alana, <laughs> what do you think? Um, well, first, I, I want to apologize because my Zoom cut out right in the middle of what you were saying. And I was like, so like, ooh, what's she going to say next? And I was kind of bummed I missed part of what you said. <laughs> um, but no, I uh, agree with both of you. Um, I think that you're like swimming in, in art in, in New Mexico. Um, I, uh, I noticed like I, I've always enjoyed uh, local writers you know, like Anaya or, you know, various people like that, because they, something in the voice, kind of like, Chanel, what you were saying about the solitude, the silence, mm -hmm. it's like, it, it like rests in the air, but there's also like a song on the wind. Do you guys know what I mean? Yeah, I like how you uh -huh. said that. Yeah. Yeah. Really? yeah. That could be a new title for you. <laughs> 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 I should make a list of good titles and just use them as they come. But yeah, um, but one thing I've always appreciated, and I've kind of like looked around and uh, at, at various artists in different medias that are local, is that they're even if they're very different from each other, like their styles or what, what they're doing, that that aspect still is lingering in the art. Yes, and so I can kind of see it. I can feel it in in all the art. It like it screams New Mexico. Yeah. Oh yeah. Especially okay. okay something I want to add on to for the art in New Mexico, especially like with my medium and jewelry. Like, there's a lot of like you know Native American silversmithing, and that's really you know it's pretty popular here in this in New Mexico and it's so different from the rest of the world like the metalsmithing techniques and like their style too so that's kind of interesting and um you know there are artists that do like that can do like the traditional and then like the contemporary which I, that's what I try to do as well like turquoise is beautiful <laughs> yeah <laughs> we all agree yes <laughs> I believe so yeah Ask next. Um, just I want to kind of talk a little bit about Arts Thrive since you all are in the show. Um, it's a pretty accessible art exhibition. Most of the artwork is, you know, a really reasonable price. It's between like two or three hundred all the way up to, you know, two thousand. You know, some artworks are a little bit more, but those are like bronze pieces and things like that. So, um, but why why would you recommend someone seeing the show or buying from the show? So what um, I love about okay, Arts Thrive, oh, go ahead. No, no, please, please go. <laughs> <laughs> so what I love about Arts Thrive is that, you know, here I am, I'm talking to Francoise, which is a mixed media artist, and then Alana, that is a photographer, which okay. I would have never met any other way, too. And um, so I think that's really, really important that it's like building community as well. And the price point is just like amazing. You, like Eric said, you can buy pieces of handmade, one of a kind pieces of art that is made by the artists themselves for just a couple hundred dollars. And not only is it going to support the artist so that artists could keep making art, it's going back into the museum for like educational outreach for the children and things like that too, which, you know, I, growing up, I don't think, I mean, I was exposed to art, but I don't think I was, I don't, I don't ever remember going to like museums as like a field trip to, as a school, you know, as schools and things like that. So, um, you know, I think you, I think uh, Arts Thrive gives the tools for um, kids to be able to attend those kind of things like by, um, you know, like the magic bus program and things like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. To me, Arts Thrive is such uh, you know, shows such an incredible variety mm. of, of art. Mm. That is that, you know, every time that's what uh, strikes me and I love it. I love it. Oh, I look at something and 
this person is doing that? How did she come or he came about with this? You know, and what is it that sustained this person to do that? It's, it's almost magical to see the, you know, the, 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 the you know, the little uh, ceramic pieces, well, jewelry, you know, photography. I mean, it's incredibly varied. So mm -hmm. nobody can be bored, go to Arts Drive and, and be bored. There's no way. Either that or they have had a brain <laughs> operation. <laughs> had their brain removed or something. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, no, I agree. It is so, uh, there is such a variety. Um, that's why I love it. And then like, the, and then it's accessible. Like you can, you can take home those pieces with you. It's not just like you can, it's not just a piece that is museum quality. You can bring that museum quality into your own house, into that's your own it. life. Yes, you know? yes, mm -hmm. yes, and living with art to me is not, it's not a do I, don't I, it's a must, it's an absolute must, and, mm -hmm. and for young people to, uh, to have, maybe who have not started yet collecting or who are just, it's, uh, I think, I think it's a wonderful introduction, because as Eric was saying, and the prices are not <laughs> they are not ridiculous. They are not outrageous. Yeah. I think they are reasonable, and 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 they can easily, you know, start. Okay, uh, you know, this one little piece, you know, that's going to be going to our home. And then, I remember years ago, years ago, when we first moved to Albuquerque, when we uh, we went to well, it was then the miniatures, right? And so I bought, uh, we bought a little piece, which is in our dining room right now, um, you know, with some other pieces there. And how absolutely moving, you know, uh, it, that uh, it goes back to how we felt when we bought it and it's here, it's part of our life and it will be part of our children's lives, you know, at some point. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so it's, it, it, it's just, to me, a necessity, and art thrive is, to me, the ideal. Um, what do you say in English? Um, I hate that. See, when I don't find my words, um, <laughs> neither in French nor in English. <laughs> what happens? Uh, you know, but we can talk about something else. <laughs> I don't find the word that I wanted to say. The place to find, you know, this kind of art to make it our own and. You said something, Chanel, that now you know that really ringed, you know, about getting a piece, you know, which is not oh, these thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth, you know, oh no, we can't afford that. That's for museums, you know. No, art should be in everybody's home. Period. You can't live without art. At least that's the way I feel, you know. <laughs> Yeah. That's true. And, you know, and what I've liked, I, I've gone to this one twice now, once with a friend and once with family. And uh, what I found really interesting is watching everyone's responses, because there was uh, a number of times where I would be like so drawn to a piece and be like, oh, my God, this is amazing. And, uh, you know, and for <laughs> artists, for me, I've been like a super inspired by everything I've been seeing there, like just the quality of the work. It's just amazing what people have come up with. Um, but uh, my, 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 my friends and family are reacting in their own way to things that I might not have really noticed. That's and, correct. Uh, That's yeah, funny. and Eric had mentioned something uh, a while ago of, you know, there's something for everybody and that is 100% true. There, yes. there really is like some piece of work that is going to respond to anyone who walks in there that could because of the variety. Yes, that's that's mm -hmm. that's exactly right. Yeah, that. That's why I like that. There's like no theme, you know, like usually like mm -hmm. exhibitions, like there's like a set theme and Very like, often, all the work yes. kind of go with that theme. But there's just such a wide range. And um, I know a lot of it I want to take home, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like, I love all like I love that. I know where I would put that piece. And, <laughs> Right. <laughs> and then, of course, it's where? At the Albuquerque Museum. <laughs> this is Albuquerque. 
It's not Santa Fe. <laughs> Sorry, Santa Fe. <laughs> but yeah, you know, it's, well, I, I don't know where you live, Alana or Chanel. I live in Albuquerque. Uh, oh, yes. Uh -huh. I'm in Albuquerque, yes. So to me, yeah. it's, it's very moving. I mean, I feel attached. You know, this is, you know, the Albuquerque Museum. This is our museum, mm -hmm. you know, and the show is directly, you know, whenever someone buys something, even if it's a small piece, it's supporting, you know, this museum. I mean, I think it's, it's awesome. Very, very important. Indeed. Oh, yeah. And then also when I was looking up that, um, like that magic bus program that it kind of helps fund, what I really liked about that is it, it showed like how much it would be like to take a classroom somewhere or how much it would be to give those school supplies so oh, that yes. they can do like the arts and crafts out oh, at yes. the home or in the classroom. So it gives, really gives you perspective of how much our art and the support can have on the young children and on the community. So and yes, very that good. was really informative because a lot of people don't know, like don't think about that or don't know. So. Yeah, and you know, with the Arts Thrive having 60% go back to the artists, the other 40% goes to various programs that, you know, the museum has going on, whether it's, yeah. you know, to help kids come into the museum or yes. to acquire a piece of art or to yes. maintain things in the museum. It's, it really goes directly back to keeping people coming into the museum yeah. and being able to see the artwork. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So. So I'll ask one final question of everyone, um, and I, hopefully it's not redundant, but um, I really kind of wanted to ask um, what makes artwork important to you personally? Um, I'll give you a know, minute to think about it. Where to start? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's something. another... Okay, go ahead. Alana, you were talking, I think. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, my. Go ahead. Uh, I've got something going on with my phone. It keeps freezing. So, um, yeah, for me, it's just an extension. Like, I, I have no choice but to do art. And it's a part of my life. It's a, a part of the lives of most of the people I know. You know, that that is just a natural aspect in, in human beings, I think, is this uh, sense of creativity need to create and, you know, express yourself in the world, uh, you know, add color to it. Okay, well, I'm thinking about, you know, about rock art, you know, about these wonderful um, drawings in caves. And the oldest ones mm. being, I think, something like 69,000 years. They were making art, you know. So <laughs> here we are, 2021, you know, and uh, we cannot live without art. This is an expression of who we are, our culture, you know, and, and our lives. And, and so um, art is you know, is, is what is in our veins. I mean, it's, you know, it shows our emotion and, and et cetera, et cetera. So it, it will always be there because it needs to. We can, we can share, look at how we have talked now with Chanel and Alana and how fun that was just to hear, you know, the different things. So, and, and what are we talking about? We're talking about art, you know. And, and that's really what it's all about, you know, and we see it differently as one of you mentioned, I think Alana, you did, you know, your family mm -hmm. had reactions and some people, are, and, and, and then we share and we exchange and, you know, how sad to think, <laughs> you know, we could live in a world without that. I know, I would commit. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know. To, to expand on what you're saying on that, you know, um, it made me think when you're bringing up the cave paintings and all of that, that a lot of what's left behind, like when we're studying other eras in history, what we're looking at is the artwork that was left behind. Exactly. You know, of course, yeah, of course, there's a lot of writing to explain what happened, but the artwork actually 
like um, I'll use the romantic period in the late 1800s as an example. It, it gives you the feel of the mindset of the day. Very well said, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Right, it, yeah, it captures the feeling. I totally agree. So I like how you put that. And then also Alana, kind of what you said too, like how it's like as human beings, like we have to, like it's just like something that's like programmed in us, right? It's like we have I to, it's so. just something that we have to do. It's not like people ask and say, well, do you love making jewelry to me? And so I was like, I don't know if I necessarily like love it, but I feel like that's what I, I'm like, that's what feels right to me. That's what I'm supposed to do mm -hmm. to get what's in here to get it out into there, <laughs> you know? Right. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and look at children. They all, you know, you have, we haven't seen a child that did not take a piece of paper and, and started doing you know that that is because he doesn't have to produce a mas masterpiece you know I, I look at my grandchild and it's so and I'm thinking oh I'm going to use that as one of, in one of my paintings this is better than what I do <laughs> you know the child just naturally you know creates does something so oh, yeah. So it's later that, you know, the famous Picasso, what he said about that, yeah, <laughs> took me a, an entire lifetime. What did he say? Uh, it, it took me a year to learn how to paint like, um, and then like Leonardo da Vinci, and it's taking me an entire lifetime to draw and paint like a child, you know, so mm -hmm. that's very true. It's, it's so, mm -hmm. that's what art is, a necessity. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, absolutely. An outlet, I think. Yeah, like a total, like an outlet. You know, yeah, just to get it out, especially during these times right now. Like this, like kind of what gets me kind of, kind of to. Oh yes. Depressed, you know, yes, <laughs> kind of right. like bring, right. bring it back in. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. To that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. And everyone, I think everyone. Um, when pe I hear a lot of people say, oh, I'm not an artist. Oh, I'm not an artist. It's like, oh, yes, I know. you are. You are an artist, but you just haven't found your 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 um, your um medium. It could be, you know, mixed media. It could be photography. It could be painting. It could be sculpture. Like, everyone it has their own. Everyone's an artist, but it's like, they, just, they have it in them. But a lot of times you hear people say, that, oh, I'm not an artist. I couldn't do something like that. And oh, I know. I know. I taught actually in Tokyo. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I, talk, I taught workshops in Tokyo and well, I had an interpreter and, um, and I heard, I don't know how many times, you know, uh, we're not just in Tokyo, but everywhere, you know, oh no, I can't, I won't be able to, I just, I, I signed up, but I'm not going to make, oh, I said, oh yes. By the end of this, <laughs> you're gonna have created something, and it will it will blow your mind. And you know, and and it's very true. Everybody has a creative side, mm -hmm. but so many people are intimidated, and you know, etc. And also, they have other interests. But anyway, right. like my husband was a scientist. <laughs> Science, science and art, versus science and art can kind of intermingle, you know. Well, okay. <laughs> Tonight we'll have a glass of wine and we'll discuss that. <laughs> yeah, no, well, especially know. with jewelry you're making, I can see, you know, science and art in intermingling. Yeah. Or oh, yeah, it's yeah, like alchemy. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. it, it does. It can. Definitely. Right. And with your quilt work, I mean, you're doing like very specific things. And I think I did see your work and I think I was blown away by how, um, this is off topic, I guess, but, <laughs> but um, by how unique it was. I had never seen quilt work done like that. I know. You know <laughs> that was, that was an, <laughs> such an intriguing take on uh, it. They were describing so, me as the crazy quilt lady. You know, oh. <laughs> and, you know, suddenly there is one quilt with an enormous spider, you know, and you know the size of quilts with all kinds of colors, the wrong, wrong uh, amount of legs, I didn't care, or, you know, um, African masks, you know, and, uh, well, thank you for saying that. Mm, it was indeed. fun, you know, but I had <laughs> done everything I wanted. 
I guess we'll go ahead and start wrapping it up. So um, thank you so much for joining me today to oh. talk about Arts Drive and to kind of talk just about art and to have this discussion. Um, it was really fun for me just to listen to, to the three of you talk about art. So uh, thanks for letting me in on that as well. Oh, it was a lot of fun. I just want to add, yeah. I would love to meet those two ladies <laughs> at some oh. point. So yes. I, I don't yes. know how but you know yeah, I, I, it has been a lot of fun looking I'll at you and everybody. listening to you yeah i'll send out the emails to everyone and you can kind of set it up or if you want me to set it up whatever you want to do so we can we can do that so let's that think about awesome. that yeah so thank you it was really nice to talk about all this with everyone and get different perspectives and i had a lot of fun too so me too thank, thank you Eric. thank you very much yeah. and Happy, uh, productive rest of your of your week, of your day. And the show will be Thank up you. until <laughs> December 5th. So um, if, if you get a chance to see it again before December 5th, before it goes down, then I will. Over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank, okay, you. thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.